Hello, my beautiful people. You are welcome to today's message. Today's message is titled, Who the Holy Spirit Is. Okay, before we go more further, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification button so that you'll be the first to get notified whenever we post a video. Like as I was saying, this today's message is titled, Who the Holy Spirit Is. So our man of God, Reverend Dr. Chris Akilomi, is going to let us know who the Holy Spirit is and how it operates in the life of an individual. So I want you all to watch this message to the end and let us know on the comment section how this message has been a blessing to you. And also I want you all to share this message so that others also will be blessed by this message. Thank you and keep watching. The Holy Spirit is a significant concept in Christian theology. According to Christian belief, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Holy Trinity, along with, along with God the Father and God the Son, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is often described as the active presence of God in the world and in the lives of believers. The Holy Spirit is considered to be the source of divine guidance, wisdom, and power. It is believed that the Holy Spirit works in the hearts of individuals to bring about spiritual transformation and enable them to live in accordance with God's will. The Holy Spirit is seen as a comforter, helper, and advocate for believers. In the New Testament of the Bible, the Holy Spirit is depicted as being involved in various rules and activities. These include empowering individuals for ministry, convicting people of sins, leading believers into, into truth, distributing spiritual gifts, and fostering unity within the Christian community. The Holy Spirit is often embolized by images such as a dove, fire, or wind, which represent its characteristics and actions. Different Christian denominations may have variation in their, in their understanding and emphasize on the Holy Spirit, but it's important as an integral part of the Christian faith remain consistent across various traditions. Furthermore, our man of God, Reverend Dr. Chris Oyakilomi, is going to let us know more about who the Holy Spirit is on this message. So I want you all to listen to this message to the end. Thank you and continue listening. Holy Spirit, you know, the Father sits down and the Holy Spirit sits over there and says, let's discuss what are we going to do now. Who is the Holy Spirit? No, he's not some cloudy thing moving around in heaven without a shape. Moving with sodopodia all over the place. You know, he, he's just moving around. No, who is the Holy Ghost? Can we just read a few things here? St. John's Gospel. Chapter 14 is in John's Gospel. I want to read. <clears throat> Here it says, from verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. Now pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Did you see that? All right, now turn quickly to chapter 15. I want to read about the same person here in verse 26. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. That is the key. He didn't say who is coming from the Father. He didn't say who shall come from the Father. He says who comes. The Holy Ghost is the one who proceeds from the Father. I want to, under, I want to understand this. See, the, the Father is always on the throne. Can we make it stronger? Father's always on his throne. He never leaves the throne. He's God. He doesn't need to go from point A to point B. He never needs to. Say, ah, that would be boring. Oh, you don't know him. He 
doesn't need to go to where. He himself is distance. Where should he go? Where should he reach? He's higher than the heavens. He outweighs the world. Where do you want him to go? Go to where? Where is the place when he feels all things? The father sits on the throne. And he wants to go over there. To point B. He proceeds from him. And remains on his throne. And goes there. And he is not diminished. Did you understand that? Yeah. He is not diminished. He proceeds from him. And goes over there. And while he's doing something over there. He wants to do something else over there. He proceeds from here. And goes over there. And still not diminished. And doesn't need to move. And while he's doing something there, he wants to go from there to that other point there. He doesn't need to leave there. He proceeds. And he's the same. He's here. He hasn't left yet. Yet in his totality, he's over here. In his totality, he's over there. Not one hand going over there and one leg jumping, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And he's sitting over here. He doesn't need to turn to look at you from behind. He just walks out from him. <laughs> that which proceeds from him is known as the Holy Ghost. That is the Spirit of God. The Bible says, for by His Spirit, He garnished the heavens while He was on His throne. Don't think of God getting out of that throne and going to walk in the heavens. No, 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 a thousand times no. He's still there and yet He and works by His Spirit. That's the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing me? That's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the one that proceeds from the Father. Who comes out. It is the presence. The personality that goes from him. So he is himself God. So when we talk about the Holy Ghost. Don't think of someone junior to Jesus. Don't think of someone junior to the Father. Don't think of a younger man. Don't even think of something smaller. Remember he is co-equal with God. He is himself God. Hallelujah. That's God. But now he's telling us. Oh I like this. See he revealed his son. When he brought his son to us, he was led to the cross. And he died for us. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are here. And the son did his job. And let understand. Now, who is this Holy Ghost? Say, I pray the Father and He shall give you another comforter. Even the Spirit of truth. The Spirit of reality. Whom the world cannot receive because it seeth Him not, neither knoweth Him. In other words, the world walks in the realm of the senses so they can't see Him. So they don't know Him. Because the world believes in what they can see. They can only know what they can perceive with their senses. If they can see it, if they can touch it, if they can smell it, they don't know it. All of the knowledge that we have on earth today is based on knowledge from the human senses. But there is another kind of knowledge that comes by the agency of the Spirit of God. There's another kind of knowledge. It says, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. It says, but you him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. You know, they 
he said his name shall be called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. The prophets understood that the coming of that son of almighty God was the presence of God in our midst. God with us because the word became flesh and the word was the word of God, not the word of a man. The word became flesh. He came on to his own. His own received him not. You know the Bible says he was in the world. And the world was made by him. <laughs> and the world knew him not. The world was made by him. Hallelujah. When God said let the light. He spoke. The words went forth. The spirit went forth and caused it to happen. He said let the fruit trees spring up. He spoke. The Bible doesn't say. And God was trying to make this thing like this. And trying to. No, no, no. He spoke. He said, let the fruit trees spring up. And they did. What about man? He said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And man was created. But man was in God when he was created. Until he squeezed dust in the shape. And made man in his own image. The man that was created was in him. The man that was made was standing out here. Until... The Bible says, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. That was God with us when Jesus came. Emmanuel, God with us. But there was a greater revelation that was to come. And this was God's dream all the time. He exemplified it in Jesus. When Jesus received the Holy Ghost, let me tell you, Jesus was 100% man. But he was 100% God. Not 50-50. <laughs> he was fully man and very God. <laughs> sure he was. <laughs> <laughs> 